Hello, my name is Philip Charles Trusty. This is my house in Salamis Bay, Cyprus. I uh, come here after serving 30 years of injustice in British prisons. Born Fulham, 1948. Cut long story short, when I was 22, I became a bank robber, having, as they say, worked up the ladder from other crimes. Um, but we skipped to 1974, when I was arrested by the uh, so called Flying Squad, Scotland Yard, with others for armed robberies. And um, it was the start of the Supergrass era. And um, first it was Bertie Smalls, and the next ones was one of my brothers, James Trusty, it was Billy Williams. In 1974, I was arrested by the robbery squad, flying squad, what you like, in uh, London uh, with others. Some of them turned what was then called to be the new Supergrass system, one of the worst traffic of justice that ever happened in England. Um, and they used these people to fit up innocent people. I wasn't totally innocent, but there next to me in the dock, got 15 years, Alan Charlie was totally innocent. He got 15 years. And uh, another man at the same time, got uh, Ronnie Cook, not rested with us, but other people, he was totally innocent. He got uh, 16 years, it was a bad time. In those days, the flying squad was a law unto themselves. And when you try to tell people, every single one of them was a Freemason and corrupt, they thought you was mad and just saying it because you was a criminal come out late with a public inquiry, etc., a parliamentary inquiry, this is all true, but that was 20, 30 years later. But every single one, you had to be corrupt and a Freemason to get in Scotland Yard. Every single squad, you couldn't be anything else but a Freemason and corrupt. That's the way the Queen wants it, likes it, that's how they do the cover-ups, etc. And um, we went through the trial, endless lies told, endless, endless lies. Um, and you notice, if you go through these things, that these... QCs and people, they're all involved, the judges. They then become Attorney General, because all MPs as well. They become and they keep the cover-up going for many years because they just keep changing positions. It's the same gang, biggest gang of crooks in the world, the Freemasons and that, the Queen's Mafia. And um, that's how it runs, ne nepotism, etc. There's no such thing as democracy in England, you find out. And I ended up getting a life sentence for the charge of attempted murder I wasn't guilty of. But well, let's look at this attempted murder for a moment. A policeman ended up in hospital for about half an hour having two stitches in the tip of his shoulder. You know, I've seen people get a slap on the wrist Monday morning for that, drunken paddies and people fighting on a Friday night. Monday morning they get a slap on the wrist three months or something. I end up with a life sentence for it. Nobody else does, but I do. They give me three twenties for three robberies, five fifteens for conspiracy that didn't even happen. And uh, the whole thing, one big sham. If you're not guilty, you can't get pro. They say you can, but that's another part of the Queen's lies. You don't get pro if you're innocent, because you don't fit the pro criteria and all the rest of it. They try to break you and just leave you in prison to rot and die. And some people do. And um, lots of people don't realise how many innocent people. They remember the Guildford Six, Birmingham Four, these people. They don't remember how many more there was and are in prison. And unless you're serving 20, 30 years, it's almost impossible to prove you're innocent, because you haven't got the time to go for the British legal system. They just drag it out and out and out and out. And um, you only realise this when it happens to you, one of your family, one of your friends. That's the only time you get to really know whether, uh, how deep it goes, this corruption and, and stuff in the system. Um, they say it's changed now, I don't doubt. You know, it probably has changed a bit, but I don't think so. Not too much. And um, so I ended up doing 27 years. And even with people helping like Tony Benn and Dixon of the Telegraph, all wonderful people trying to help me, trying to get something done about it, we couldn't budge. The case went to the House of Lords at one time. Still couldn't get anything done because they were protecting the Queen, who stuck her nose in the case, which she shouldn't have done before the first appeal in 77. It was in the papers, the news of the world and that, mid, about May uh, 1977, that one of the supergrasses, who got five years instead of 18 or 20 years, one of the worst ones, he threatened Scotland Yard and the legal system. If he didn't get released, he was going to tell the truth. So then, of course, the old system had to back up and sign a, the Queen had to sign a prerogative, royal pro, release him on the royal prerogative thing. So he got a free release um, to shut him up. Um, his attorney, his, uh, his QC was uh, Patrick Mayhew, who then goes on to be Attorney General. That's what I'm saying. They all they keep putting these same people. One minute they're a QC and MP, next minute they're Attorney Generals and what have you. And they can keep the cover-up going because they keep sliding the same people into the system. It's the way it goes over the years. And then they cover up for their own dirty work, which how they got to the top of the ladder, and all their friends' dirty work. There's a chain of them. And it's, uh, people don't realise it. it's all Freemasonry. In the House of Commons, there's a you know, the House of 
the Parliament, this big Freemasons Lodge. It's right to the top to the Buckingham Palace. And uh, the Royal Mafia and the Freemasons, you know, they run everything. And if they want to cover something up, they can cover it up. And they don't care if you're innocent. They don't care. They pretend to, but they don't care. They'd rather you have you rot in prison than admit they, you know, they fitted somebody up and all this sort of stuff. And some journalists who investigated our case, it got pretty uh, hot because of Alan Child. He, he was totally innocent. We got a lot of publicity over that. He was totally innocent. Um, some of them said, this case is so serious, if it comes out, it'll bring the old system down because it proves there's a chain of corruption, not just a few bent cops at Scotland Yard. There's a chain going right to the top. And that's why it's, such a, you know, it's a bad case in that respect and they won't let it out. So, so are, uh, you, are you prepared to, prepared to name the man that got the royal pardon? Betty Williams. Betty Williams, uh, he, was one, he, he was the one of the first supergrasses who told so many lies that other supergrasses who followed him in, the, in these cases had to tell the same lies as him because otherwise he couldn't get a deal. One man, Roger Jenkins, I grew up with him, he tried to tell the truth and uh, Scott and I wouldn't have him as a supergrass because he kept contra contradicting the lies. He thought he had to tell the truth. He didn't catch the game. You had to tell lies and follow the leader. And all these others already get, you know, made their statements and yet if he didn't follow it, so he couldn't get a deal. Um, that's the way it worked. Uh, you, know, you have to understand this name of the game. And I was only 24 at the time. So it was hard to, even for me, I knew a lot about it. It was a bit of an eye opener. I knew quite a bit about bank cops and all this sort of stuff. I didn't realise how involved it was. And it was all the legal system. And a lot of people don't even know they got to court their QC as an MP. I got tired in prison of telling people, oh, yeah, I know your QC as an MP. For... No, Phil, it was a QC, I told you. I say, no. He's also an MP, he's a Tory, hang on Flogging Brigade, you really think he's going to fight for you and get you off? Go and check it out. And they go and come back and say, Phil, you were right, he is an MP, he's a Tory. Exactly, and you're Labour and you're out the back streets. You know, they don't tell you these things, they're, you know, they're, they keep all this information quiet, they're only fortunes out the legal system, fortunes in their swindles in Parliament, and they're skimming the system for billions a year out of taxpayers' money, it's one big swindle. I don't know why, but a thing just grew up, I don't know, perhaps it was films like Bonnie and Clyde on the telly, I don't know. But all of a sudden, lots of young people started robbing and going armed robbery. It just become a thing. Lots of people I knew done it. People I went to school with. It was just all over London. It just become the thing to do. It was, you know, that was it. And I can't. Really, it's a phenomenon. It happened. Uh, there was no drugs in them days. Well, there was a little bit here and there, but nothing. It was nothing to do with drugs. And these days, it's all drugs and crack and whatever. You people robbing and doing things. But them days, it wasn't. You haven't been totally unlucky, as we can see in the surroundings. House with a swimming no, pool. No, no. When I finally got a chance to escape, my friends are uh, many dog and Arif. But the Arif family, then Doe and Arif, said if you ever get, you know, a lot of people in prison, I was, it was a well-known fit-up case. Everyone knew it was, a, it was you know, terrible what happened to me and, and for other, other people. And he said, if you ever get a chance to escape and get away from this, come to Cyprus and I'll help you. So here I am in sunny Cyprus, here we are nearly Christmas, still sitting in the sun. Uh, we sold up, me and my wife, who stuck by me all those years, for 30 years. And uh, so we sold our uh, ex-council house we bought, where I was, she bought while I was away. And uh, come here and book this villa, and we live in Cyprus now. We've been here since I come 2001. Carol come 2002, and um, it's a lovely place. They accept you here if you don't cause any problems. You know, and uh, it's a nice country. It's a good. It's you know, for us, it's good. All countries have got their problems and faults, but this, this, you know, and generally speaking, the police here are very helpful and nice. You're very, very fine a bank policeman here. Contrary to belief, it's actually a very straight police network here and they're very helpful. Very, I've got friends here in the police, we go socialising with them, we go charity do's and I do charity work, I'm good at doing it and people ask me to do it and raise money for these various things. And so we do this sort of work for the dogs, cats or people, people in need. Um, I was at Maystone Prison um, and at the time we was, was working on the case and some friends helping me and Dixon the Telegraph and we were sending out a lot of these sort of flyers to lots of people and causing a bit of problem. And um, I'll give you one of those later, I've still got one upstairs. Um, and so they decided to try and shut me up. They sent me to a, they're supposed to do this anyway. I do it, most, most people have served 10, 20, 15, 20 years. They send you to an assessment centre, see if you're still okay. Because most people go mad in 10 years in prison. That's the average person, 15 years, many suicides and things. And, um, but I was all right. I always had a strong mind. I studied a lot in prison, a lot of courses, a lot of studies. And um, kept myself busy and occupied. But they come and swooped on me, no warning, nothing. Off I go to this assessment centre. And they sent me there as, uh, you know, a serious case. They had locked me in the a unit, thinking I was highly dangerous, going off my head. It took them a week to figure out they'd been conned. Then they apologised and put me into the normal unit. Started getting on to Yarmouth just to ask why, you know, you'd done this to them. It just shows how they could even swindle the national wealth. You wouldn't think they could do it, but they do. And um, one of the, uh, the senior nurses there, it's welfare and nurses run them sort of place, it's a national health place in Ealing. 
He said, the uh, boss said, um, we're thinking about having an inquiry into you, he said, because we, you know, you've been here after being there a month or two, he said, we can't find anything wrong with you, you actually function better than some of the staff here, and you're already helpful with the other patients and people. It's a mixed place with men and women. And he said, we can't find anything wrong with you. And then we're telling the young officers to take you back, they're refusing to take you back to prison. They're saying, no, you keep him, there's something going on here, which we don't get involved in this sort of thing, he said. We're not like the police or the legal system. We don't get involved in corruption and things. We're nationally off. We're, you're taking up a valuable space that somebody else who needs it could be having. I said, yes, there's plenty of people in prison who need these places. He said, there's something wrong in this case. We know we're thinking about having an we, we're entitled to do it, have an inquiry about this, he said, because it's it's we know it's all wrong. But uh, after you're there for 12 weeks, cut, it, okay, cut a long story short, they have to let you out every day, take you for a walk up the Indian Eye Road, go and have something to eat, whatever, meet your wife and things. So I decided that... Um, it was best after 27 and a quarter years that I uh, ran away and um, went to Cyprus to have a new life. I knew if I even got out in England, the police wouldn't leave me alone, etc. Once I got the, once I ate you for some reason, I don't know why, I've never done these, I've never seriously hurt in my life. I've never been accused, in or out of court, of stabbing, slashing. I've never been accused ever of doing any serious damage to anybody. In fact, the opposite, I'm always helping people. It's my nature to help, and even in prison and places, I always help people and try, you know, stop trouble. It's I like peace and quiet. And um, but uh, on one of these walks, cut a long story short, I run off down the Indian Eye Road. Um, I first pull, now usually if you're on home leaves and these sort of things, no one, there's no fuss, they just report it to the police and wait to catch you another time or something. It's no, because you're already on day release, you can't be dangerous if you're on day release, etc. So I went to my cousin's house in Hammersmith and uh, he was out, he'd be back in an hour, so I was speaking to his daughter. I don't know, it was a helicopter outside the window, police helicopter. I thought, can't be me, don't be paranoid, but maybe you should be, you know, it's, there's a thing called healthy paranoia when you're a criminal. And uh, I thought I'd go out and come back later. As I ran out the front door, there's another police helicopter, so then I thought, it ain't my paranoia, there's two police helicopters either side of this block of flats, they must have followed me on CTV or something, to, from, it's not far from Ealing to there, and um, they know where I am. So I snuck down, I used to live in council flats, I grew up in them, so I know how to get out of council flats without being seen. I got away, but just in case, I'll come back about an hour later, went to have something to eat and had a drink, and um, there's a massive build up of police around in this block of flats. and still the helicopters, everything. And I couldn't believe they're doing this for me, you know, after all them years, and now I'm basically an old man. Why are you doing all this? You know, I've been away 27 years. Why, you, you know, what's all this big build up of police and hunting for me? And uh, I made a few phone calls to friends and people. They said, we know, the police have already been here. They was in people's houses all over London, everywhere. Anybody who knew me, anything to do with me, going mad. So um, I left London and went down the coast the next day. To cut it all short. Uh, made the first bad mistake, bought a car, a van, and uh, went to get some insurance on it. And I got stopped by the police going down a bus lane. There was no bus lanes when I was away, when I first went away. So it's a new thing to me, bus lanes.